Hey guys! So today I'm going to do a video that concludes uh, 2011 and I'm going to show you guys uh, my favorite books of 2011 and this idea came from the Metalhead Bookworm also known as Melissa and she did a video talking about her top 11 books of 2011 so I thought I would do this video to show you guys my favorites of 2011 and uh, share with you some more recommendations and some books that I didn't really talk about so thank you Melissa for this awesome video idea so go check out her channel I'll leave her link in the down bar so I made a list of 11 books 11 being my least favorite and number one being my most favorite but I love them all and they're all my favorites but I put them in a way that shows you guys which ones I didn't love as much as let's say number one or number two so I'm gonna start with book number 11 which is The Summer of Skinny Dipping by Amanda Howells when I started reading this I expected a light summer read that would be fun and entertaining and just the type of book that would put me in the summer kind of mood but when I started reading it, I soon discovered that it wasn't the light and fun read I was expecting, but it was much, much more than that. This story follows a girl who kind of has to find herself and discover herself during the summertime, and she kind of has to mend relationships with her cousins and her family. So much more than a simple summer read, and I highly recommend it because it's heart-wrenching, and it's sad at times, and happy at times, and there's all these emotions that Amanda Howells creates that feel so real. Hard to believe that it's actually just words on a page because the emotions come to life so much. Love the main character. There's also romance in it that will complete this book and make you love it even more than you already did. I feel like a lot of uh, girls or any readers out there will definitely love this book because of how impacting and beautiful the story is. Alright, so book number 10 is 10 Things We Did and Probably Shouldn't Have by Sarah Milnowski. This book was so entertaining, so much fun to read. One big journey full of laughter and entertainment and so many good moments that had me laughing and smiling and everything like that. So we follow a girl named April who had to lie to her parents um, to stay at her friend's house. Amy's parents believe that um, her friend's parents will be staying or her friend's mom will be with Amy and her friend for the time being but really Amy's gonna be parentless with her friend and they're gonna have the whole house to themselves and that equals a lot of crazy things to go down including parties and all sorts of things that will have you laughing and smiling and completely in awe of how fun and extraordinary this book is. How many times have I said fun in this <laughs> whole thing? Alright guys, so book number nine is The Gathering by Kelly Armstrong. Prior to this series, Kelly Armstrong wrote The Darkest Powers trilogy, and now this one is The Darkest Rising trilogy. I felt it was so good, the romance and all the um, things that unfold within this story was so cool, and it takes place in Canada. And that's why I loved it too, because, you know, takes place in my hometown. So we follow a girl named Maya who doesn't know much about her real parents because she was adopted and she starts to want to discover more when she kind of is more interested in the whole idea of where she's come from and she begins with this little birthmark that is on her hip that's in the shape of a paw print and from then on she starts discovering things about herself and what she, who she really is and what she can really do. She gets more involved with this new boy and things start to happen within the town. So definitely check it out. It was really really cool. I thought it was a great um, first installment to the series. Definitely check this out. I loved it and the second one I think is coming out sometime this year in April or something and I'm really excited for it. For it. <laughs> Book number eight is Across the Universe by Beth Revis and this was an amazing sci-fi slash dystopian book and it was actually a debut novel of 2011. So we follow a girl named Amy who's going to be frozen and put on a ship called Godspeed. In 300 years this ship called Godspeed is going to land on a new planet called Centauri Earth but 50 years before the ship is supposed to land on Centauri Earth something happens and Amy is violently woken up from her frozen slumber so for 50 years she's gonna have to be on that ship um, with people she pretty much does not know. So this is very scary to Amy and this is her whole adventure where she has to discover more about the people. We meet a new character named Elder who is the second in line to become the um, pretty much the ruler of the ship. We follow them and their journey and what Amy has to do in order to fit in and find herself in this place and do everything she can and how to survive without her parents because that's so difficult. So yeah, definitely check it out. It is amazing, amazing sci-fi. So descriptive and Beth Revis does an amazing job of writing it and crafting such an incredible world within the ship. So the next book I'm going to show you, which is number seven, is Hereafter by Tara Hudson. And why I love this book so much above the other ones I just showed you is because I found it to be really special and unique and the romance was incredible and I felt that the whole story felt so real to me and so emotional and powerful. So our main character is Amelia and she is a ghost 
kind of trapped in this nightmarish existence. She doesn't really remember a lot about herself and she does not remember how she died. And things begin to change when she rescues a boy named Joshua from the river that she kind of, not haunts, but where she exists. She's rediscovering herself with her with help from Joshua and things just unfold and get better and there's plot twists and it's an overall awesome, awesome book. I thought it was amazing and completely captivating and so good. So definitely check it out if you love ghosts, romance, mystery, plot twists all that sort of stuff. Definitely recommend it. Book number six is Wither by Lauren Stefano, and this was also a 2011 debut which I really really loved. It's an awesome dystopian that was so different and completely captivating and so unique. So in the world that Lauren Stefano created, men live to the age of 25 and females live to the age of 20 and this is because all children and all humans are born pretty much like a genetic ticking time bomb. The age 20 for women at the age 25 for men, this sickness kind of um, triggers itself and what leads to the ultimate death of these people. Our main character is Ryan and she is kidnapped and forced into a polygamous marriage to a man named Lyndon who she is pretty much forced to love and she is forced into a world of wealth and privileges that are kind of um, unsettling to Ryan because it's not where she wants to be. She wants to be back with her twin brother, but she has no choice. But with the help of a servant named Gabriel, she needs to escape because that's ultimately what she wants to do. She does not want to live in this world that she doesn't belong in. One of the craziest and most unique books I've ever read. It was incredible and I definitely recommend it if you love this sort of thing. So the next book I'm going to talk about is book number five and that is Bloodlines by Rochelle Mead. This is her new series that takes place after the Vampire Academy series. So this would give away spoilers for those of you who haven't read her first series which is Vampire Academy. That being said, I love this because it takes new characters and it pretty much still exists in the world of Vampire Academy though. So we still get to experience the world and we get to experience um, reading about the characters from Vampire Academy. So it's pretty much the best of both worlds. We meet new ones, we get to stick with some old ones, and we learn more about the world itself and what else goes on. It was an amazing, amazing first book in a series and she is seriously one of my favorite authors and this is a prime example of why I love her so much because she's able to create such captivating and exciting books that keep you on the edge of your seat and keep you so excited throughout the whole entire thing. Check out Vampire Academy first and then this one because honestly she's an amazing writer. Michelle Mead is incredible. The main characters are so good. Book number four is Blood Red Road by Maura Young and I did do a review on this so if you want more details about the book check my link below. That's my movement for link below. <laughs> Maura Young creates a dystopian world that is ravaged by sandstorms and intense heat and we follow a girl named Sabu who has a twin brother named Lou and a younger sister and a father. So Sabu loves her twin brother. She feels like Lou is her better half and one day things go terribly wrong. These men come through the sandstorm, kidnap her brother and that's where Saba's quest begins. She wants to go find her brother, go save him. She's gonna have to embark on this journey with her sister and do whatever she can to save him and keep her sister safe. So it's her journey and it was so so cool and there's a lot of different elements about this book and if you want to know more about them check my review out because there's um, the way that she writes the book is different and things like that but just know for now that it's awesome and I feel like a lot of you would love it. You're getting into the top three and I just showed you already so it's not a surprise anymore. Anyway it's Lola and the Boy Next Door by Stephanie Perkins and this is the companion to Anna and the French Kiss. Kind of like a sequel because they do include um, some of the characters from Anna and the French Kiss but anyway we'll call it a companion for now and I loved it. I love the main character. I felt like I could relate to her more because of her hobbies and her interests and she loves fashion and that sort of thing. So Stephanie Perkins is an amazing author. Her writing is so magical, so unique and incredible. Her stories come to life and they are so so funny, so good, so entertaining and you become so close to the characters that you feel like you've known them for your whole entire life which I don't think it really think could be possible but Stephanie Perkins makes it possible with her book. So we follow a girl named Lola who's a fashion designer and she believes that the sparkler, sparklier, the more sparkles the better and the more jazzed up it is the better. Lola is a devoted daughter and a great best friend and she's also the girlfriend to a really hardcore rock and roll kind of guy. Lola has to deal with the twins living next door. It makes her think of things that she didn't want to remember but she has to come to terms with the fact that they are back next door and she has to come to terms with herself. She has to learn more about herself and the situation that she's in 
amazing amazing romance let me tell you right now it's what makes the book so good and the boy in this book whose name is Cricket is so unbelievable honestly just read it for him and Lola together they are pure magic and I can't describe how amazing they are together so number two is a dystopian and it is Divergent by Veronica Roth this was my favorite dystopian of 2011 it was a debut novel as well Veronica Roth introduced an amazing amazing series with this first installment and it's really close to being my favorite dystopian of all time. Virgin takes place in dystopian Chicago, and Chicago is divided into five factions, each portraying a certain characteristic in which the people that live in those factions hold. Beatrice is a 15-year-old girl who is about to turn 16, and this is very, very important because once you turn 16, you're given the choice um, to either stay in the faction you live in or to go to a different one, and this choice pretty much ultimately ultimately it changes Beatrice's whole world and she has to choose where she belongs and where she feels like she belongs. It was an amazing, amazing book. I love Divergent and I'm so excited for the second book which is Insurgent I believe. I freaking love this book. It's amazing. If you have not read it definitely check it out. It will make you love dystopian and it's so good. It's so good. So are you guys ready for my favorite book of 2011? Drum roll! So my favorite book of 2011 is Anna and the French Kiss by Stephanie Perkins. This book was so memorable to me. I still have all these emotions when I think about this book because I remember it so clearly because it was so captivating and it made me love it so much that I remember pretty much everything about it. It's not some cutesy little romance. There is so much more to that. There's a lot more kind of drama and events that unfold that make the romance so incredibly real and so amazing. And Stephanie Perkins is just unbelievable to me because I can't believe that a book could be this good. I didn't think a romance could turn out to be so exciting and so damn good. So Anna the French Kiss follows a girl named Anna who is going to go to a boarding school in Paris because her parents decided that you're going, you have no choice, Bye bye Very upset by this because it's in a whole new world, it's intimidating, everyone's speaking a whole new language that she doesn't even know very well and soon she meets new people and one being a boy named Etienne St. Clair and he becomes the shining star in this book besides um, Anna. I love Anna but Etienne is like a whole new... I don't even know what to say. So he's one of the best I've ever read about because of how unique, funny, and hilarious, and amazing he is. So it's one of my favorites because of the romance and the story, and it's so magical. It takes place in Paris where it's like the city of love, but definitely check out Anna and the French Kiss because it's something that needs to be experienced because it's so special. And that's why it takes number one on my top 11 2011 favorite books list. <laughs> Alright guys, so that was my top 11 list for 2011. So yeah, thank you for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I hope this helped you with some books that maybe you could read in 2012. And yeah, so thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!